Last week on N2K, we looked at what we think will be the future of technology from VR to biometrics. But in the past week, there's been an overwhelming collection of new announcements that proves that the future of tech may be a little closer than we think. With the festive season well and truly over, technology companies big and small descended on Las Vegas to show off their inventions for the coming year. The Consumer Electronics Show saw gadgets and gizmos aplenty take centre stage. The annual event invites tech fans to get a sneak peek at the technology that will be taking the world by storm this year. And while there are innovations from all walks of life, the driving force behind the convention was the future of cars. Electric and self-driving cars are still in their early days, but the concepts being shown off in Las Vegas gave a sense that the next steps are being taken very seriously. While many technology companies such as Google and Tesla have been introducing the world to their autonomous vehicles, major car manufacturers such as Ford have also been stepping up their self-driving game. They've enlisted the help of Velodyne's newest LiDAR sensors, something avid viewers of N2K will have seen us cover before. Ford are among the first to use the Velodyne LiDAR sensor, an innovation that has changed the face of autonomous vehicles. LiDAR emits short pulses of laser light to precisely scan its surroundings millions of times per second, enabling it to work out the distance to objects. This means the car can navigate through streets and in between other cars without the help of a driver. Ford CEO Mark Fields says the new sensors will make them the most advanced in the world. This all new sensor technology is elegant in design, but it makes a huge impact in how it helps advance our autonomous driving technology. The newest technology is the Ultra Puck sensors that boast a longer than average range of 200 meters. The Puck enables a driverless vehicle to create a real-time 3D map of its surroundings, which has helped Ford test out a wider range of driving scenarios. While Ford focus on the more practical consumer side of cars, secretive startup electric car venture Faraday Future have been creating something a little less pragmatic. Backed by Chinese internet billionaire Jia Ayunting, the company is not short of funding. In a bid to take on rivals Tesla and Audi, the company unveiled their impressive looking concept race car during CES. The company unveiled the FF01 concept car with its teardrop shape and aerodynamic tunnels resembling the form of the iconic Batmobile. But the car is not actually intended to be produced or sold. In fact, the aim is simply to act as a prototype for other ideas. Futuristic tech indeed, but cars are the transport of the past as far as this next tech is concerned. Meet the Ehang 184. The world's first electric personal autonomous aerial vehicle, essentially a drone that you can sit in. Chinese company Ehang caused quite the commotion at CES and what they hope will be the future of travel. Their goal is to provide an easy way to make everyday flight for short to medium distances. You just enter your destination in the accompanying app and let Ehang do the rest. Yifgang Ziong, co-founder of Ehang, revealed people may be traveling this way sooner than you think. So we're expecting to see these things flying around in 2016. Actually, we are planning on the world tour, you know, in States, in China, in Europe, in New Zealand, you know, to show people how, you know, how real it is. If you'd rather keep yourself grounded, though, this next creation is a twist on something more familiar. The Blinkboard electric skateboard comes from creators Acton, the inventors of the rocket skates. Boasting speeds of up to 12 miles per hour with six miles in its tank after a two hour charge, the Blinkboard uses a small handheld device to operate or you can use a companion smartphone app. From one future for a board on wheels to another, as Intel showed off their offering for the future of getting around, the nine bot Segway. Wow, that is so cool. This is my self-balancing vehicle. Although Intel are calling it more than a mode of transportation, as the Segway has a detachable personal robot assistant. 
Intel has teamed with Chinese company Xiaomi to create this hoverboard butler. Xiaomi's Tao Eingar speaks of how Intel are making moves towards futuristic technology. This is capable of moving around and identifying stuff. It can respond to voice command and it can stream stuff to your phone. Designed to be open platform, users may program, interact with and command the unit to complete multiple tasks like recording video. This final invention from CES aims to teach children how to invent and play their own games. The Hackable is all about encouraging kids to learn about technology. The smart, responsive ball lets children create their own games with iPad and iPhone apps. Hackable CEO Seb Potter gives an insight into what the Hackable can really do. At its heart, it has some bright LEDs, motion sensor, vibration motor and sound. And that means that it can react to all kinds of motion. You can throw it, bounce it, spin it, and Hackable knows what you're doing and can react to it. So with our free app, kids can use simple rules like that to make complex games. The invention, which started as an intern project, has now been named as a finalist for the best startup at the CES 2016 awards. High praise indeed, especially when you consider that over 3,000 companies use the exhibition as a platform to showcase their wares. And for the 170,000 attendees this year, CES was a valuable glimpse into the future of tech and what we can expect in the coming years. Still to come, we find out what lies below and tie up our look at CES with some strange innovations. Coming up, we're on the front lines of the battle for 2016's most exciting games. And we check out some unusual inventions. Next, we look at the games for 2016 that already have our thumbs twitching. Gaming in 2015 ushered in an era where indie titles could compete with million dollar blockbusters. When mobile games reached millions of new players, and home console hits absorbed billions of hours of our playtime. Virtual reality provided us with a window on the future of gaming and immersed us in our digital playgrounds like never before. One of the most exciting prospects for 2016 won't just immerse us in gaming, it will turn the entire world into a virtual playground. Regular viewers of N2K will probably remember us raving about smartphone game Ingress. This augmented reality title tasks players with visiting real-world locations in order to capture virtual portals for their in-game faction. Having now left the Google umbrella, the newly named Niantic has been working on an augmented reality game that old-school gamers will really get a kick out of. Pokemon Go takes the Ingress template to the next level by combining it with the long-running monster-battling role-playing game series. It's a match made in heaven for Niantic, as Ingress was initially developed to encourage people to get out and exercise and appreciate public works of art, which are usually where the portals can be found. A similar ethos has always been at the core of the Pokemon games, which sees players venture out into the world to capture, train and battle hundreds of cute creatures known as Pokemon. Like the core games that have been part of the series for the last 20 years, smartphone game Go will see players travelling the world in search of new and rare Pokemon. But unlike those previous titles, they'll actually have to leave the house to do it. Different Pokémon will appear in different locations around the world. For example, water Pokémon will only appear near bodies of water, so that's the only place they can be captured. Fortunately, Pokémon will be able to be traded between players to complete collections without the need for a globe-trotting trip. 
Through the partnership with Nintendo and the Pokemon Company, Niantic gets to add the power of one of video gaming's most popular and enduring brands to its unique style of gameplay. And gamers get what might just be the most immersive version of Pokemon yet. But Niantic aren't the only ones building something new on the back of a popular gaming franchise. It's just that strategy game aficionados Creative Assembly aren't looking at console games. They've got their eyes fixed on the tabletop. Warhammer is a tabletop battle game that uses miniature models and dice rolls to enact glorious combat between fantasy forces of elves, orcs and dwarves. Creative Assembly have taken the world of Warhammer and combined it with the PC strategizing of their famous Total War series that saw players engage in historical battles. It fits very well. We're very fortunate to have a, a, a long pre-production period on this game. and We spent that time reading through all of the source material that um, Games Workshop sh shared with us. Um, that's a normal part of um, starting work on any Total War um, game. We then went beyond that by playing the, the Warhammer tabletop game, you know, during lunch hours, evenings and so on, just so we could really get to know each of the races, get to know what their thing was, what their weaknesses were and everything. And it's been a matter of kind of taking that and turning that into game mechanics so that we can really evoke those races and the lore properly in our game. As Creative Assembly's Jim Whitston says, Total War Warhammer marries the two franchises perfectly. Each army brings with it unique units and strategies. For instance, the Iron World Dwarves like to stand their ground and whittle the enemy down using impressive machines and cannons. While the rampaging greenskin hordes of orcs and goblins swarm enemies, charging forward constantly with little regard for their own safety. Dealing with these different strategies and staying on top of the ebb and flow of battle is totally total war. But the Warhammer universe does introduce its own elements into the mix. Fortunately, Jim feels confident that they can manage the change. We've been making Total War games for 15 years now, so we've got a very strong foundation of making um, these battles with uh, these different types of infantry, cavalry and so on. We've, we've got that as a strong foundation, so taking that, we're now building new mechanics on top of that to allow for all of these fantastic things that you see in a typical Warhammer battle. So, you know, um, griffins flying through the air and hippogriff cavalry crashing into, um, you know, boar rider cavalry, um, huge monsters, wizards throwing powerful spells around vampires, all this kind of stuff. So, as I say, we've got a strong foundation and it, it allows us that freedom to really focus on all of the new stuff. And with all that on the go, you've got a battlefield packed with incredible possibilities. You don't need everything in the kitchen sink to make a game that looks truly impressive, as Below will attest to. Created by Canadian indie studio Capybara Games, Below likes to keep things simple. Players take the role of a tiny warrior sent to explore the depths of a remote island, although the purpose of his quest is shrouded in mystery. Below has been designed to play like a traditional roguelike game, where players have just one life, and if they die, they must start over. With that in mind, the combat is rigorous but fair, there to punish recklessness and reward careful play. But as you can no doubt see, the real thing that strikes you about below are the graphics. Using a tilt-shifted perspective, the top-down art creates a beautiful but imposing world that towers over the lonely hero. Speaking of imposing worlds, the one in Inside looks truly creepy. Developer Play Dead made their name with puzzle platforming hit Limbo and have spent five years working on the follow-up. Little is known about Inside, except that it's expected out this year and looks to be a spiritual successor to Limbo. It looks to be another slow-moving puzzler, giving players a considered pace to let them navigate tricky traps and obstacles. What we can only speculate on how it will play 
We can tell from the dystopian style and stark monochrome imagery, there will certainly be an air of oppression to this one. But then again, when combined with the sheer choice on offer elsewhere in 2016, that oppressive style should liberate gamers to have one of the best years in gaming for quite some time.